After a few attempts at 3D printed shoes, I finally developed something I actually really like wearing. They are clogs, and I'm not talking about the kind that jam up your nozzle. I like them so much that I've made three models of them available for anyone to order on 3dshoemaker.com. The key to these 3D printed clogs is the high degree of customization as well as the soft and foamy TPU I used that should print easily on just about any desktop 3D printer, whether at home or in a clinic. The orientation and support material approach I used is also helpful. I'll get into all of this in this 3D Shoemaker video. The 3D printed clog model can be found via the design slash shoes menu on the 3 dshoemakercom It's a zero drop body with a wide accommodative rocker toe and an integrated footbed for maximum comfort. I'll be adding more designs with time. For now, there is just this one. On the product page, the first thing you'll uh, need to choose is the shoe size. The default is in US sizing, but other systems can be selected. If you don't know your shoe size and width, you could always 3D print a device I'll link to in the description or head to a shoe store. Some stores now have 3D scanners that can give other information too, like heel width and instep height, which can be input into the fit customization section of the ordering form, among more advanced ones like toe box width. In addition to customizing the fit, you can also customize the footbed. Various arch heights can be selected, and there are more advanced things like depths and soon forefoot twists and met pads. 3D printed shoe models can even be ordered to match up with shoe lasts and footbeds designed in the 3D Shoe Maker plugin for Rhino. I'll get deeper into all of this customization in future posts. As far as what material to print with, the key is to use something flexible and resistive to abrasion like TPU. But it needs to be soft, much softer than common 95A, as otherwise your shoes just end up feeling like hard pieces of plastic. But soft filament can be difficult to print with, as it is like asking your extruder gears to push a soggy noodle into a straw. The solution is to use forming TPU. The filament starts off fairly hard around shore hardness 92A so that it can be pushed into the nozzle and then it softens up as it, it foams on ex exiting the nozzle potentially all the way down to 55A depending on nozzle temperature. After wearing the foamed clog on one foot and another one made of common 95A TPU on the other foot for a while now, it has become clear to me just how essential this material change is for every aspect of the shoe. As you would expect, the softer clog deforms considerably more, resulting in far less pressure points on the foot and far smoother feeling steps. And of course, the softer material has better traction too, somewhere halfway between common TPU and actual rubber. But there are subtler things too, like the matte rather than shiny appearance and a feel more like canvas or neoprene. And given the foamed material ends up being about a third lighter weight, a higher infill can be used resulting in far more uniform properties. Even the sounds the foamed material makes is more similar to conventional shoes. Foam TPU is more like an intentional shoe material rather than repurposed plastic. The filament I'm using is even rated as skin safe, though it is still just plastic and not breathable enough to be, go barefoot, though perhaps a more porous design could help with this. As far as print settings, I'll provide a link in the description for this video to the foaming TPU I'm using and a profile for the Bamboo Lab X1C. The most influential setting for this filament is nozzle temperature, which can range from anywhere from 200 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius, with the latter achieving maximum foaming. I found that quality and integrity greatly degraded at higher temperatures though, so I stuck with the profile default of 230 degrees Celsius. If you do decide to try a higher temperature, remember to also adjust the flow ratio so things don't get overcrowded. A few other things I changed were seam position and nearest and avoid crossing walls in order to reduce stringing from travels and infill to 15% gyroid. As far as hardware, I used the smooth PEI engineering plate and a 0.6mm nozzle which required a line width change to 0.6mm. Though I think a 0.4mm nozzle would do fine um, if not better. The best orientation to print at is 40 degrees from horizontal. This allows for very large clog sizes within common print volumes. My Bamboo Lab X1C can fit my US men's size 13 EE clogs no problem. I've designed the tread pattern overhang to be less than 45 degrees everywhere except the forefoot, so you could, in theory, only use support material in the toe area. However, I've found foaming TPU sags more than other filaments, and so it's best to support the entire tread, or at least the non-concave sections. 
This ends up leading to a lot of support material overall, and so a lot of waste. TPU is supposedly recyclable, but uh, this isn't convenient yet. So I came up with the idea of using what I call a support plate, which can be selected near the end of the ordering form. It's just a discardable part that acts as a kind of raised base from which to begin building support material rather than from the print bed. Foaming TPU also adheres particularly well to itself, so unless you have a competent multi-material printer that can do a different support material, then a large interface spacing is required, something around 0.7 millimeters. The end result is a bit rough, but uh, just on the sole, which of course gets worn down anyway. The biggest downside of the foaming TPU filament I'm using is the price, which is around $50 for 700 grams. My size 13 clogs, including supports, take about 250 grams of filament per side, so about $35 for the pair. This is, of course, in addition to the 3D model price, but then the design can be reprinted for the intended wearer as many times as you like. So in the end, it costs far less than a pair of brand name shoes. But you definitely want to get the print right the first time. For this reason, it might make sense to first print a mock-up with less expensive filament if you have some sitting around. Some 95A TPU would be ideal, but even PLA can give you some insight into what the fit will be like. For the mock-up, I suggest only printing the body of the clog, leaving the sole off, so as to save on filament. I might eventually provide a dedicated minimized mock-up model in the future to save on more on filament. If the mock-up ends up not fitting well, you can always order a different size at a discounted rate via the size fit adjustment option above the size selection on the ordering form. I'm extremely pleased with these 3D printed clogs. I can now confidently say that the average 3D printer user can 3D print a perfectly functional pair of shoes on a common desktop 3D printer in about a day and for a reasonable price. They may just be rudimentary clogs, but this is just a start, and they represent far more than that. This is, for sure, a disruptive technology that will change the industry. In future posts, I'll go into greater depth on the various details, like an extensive wear report and various customizations for both these clogs and new shoe designs I plan on making available. 2025 is going to be an interesting year in the world of 3D printed shoes. I hope you'll like and subscribe to the 3D Shoemaker channel and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching.